Up next on The Grio, Team Swiner, two Bull City entrepreneurs. The more you can support the businesses of the people who look like us, the more they can flourish in a time that's very uncertain for them. Rick right. Swiner, a.k.a. DJ Big Fella, is the founder and owner of Durham-based Spider Marketing. His wife, Dr. Nicole Swiner, heads up Durham Family Medicine and Swiner Publishing. And they're most definitely American. <laughs> Welcome, Team Swiner. Oh, my goodness. We have Rick Swiner, entrepreneur, former journalist, extraordinaire, and then his wife, beautiful wife, Nicole, Dr. Nicole Swiner. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Entrepreneur as well, mompreneur as well. Um, there's no term for fatherpreneur, is there? Hmm. Just daddy. Dadpreneur? Just, just dad. And thank you so much for being griots. Did you know what a griot was? Well, I'd heard of the term before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a griot is from West African culture. It, these are storytellers. Mm -hmm. They use genealogy. They used history to share their artistry with people. And so that's what you're helping us to do today. I am so appreciative of both of you being griots. I have a feeling that we're going to have a lot of moments <laughs> and a lot of pearls dropping and maybe some pearl clutching but that's okay and one of the uh projects that you launched is uh couch uh chronicles right uh -huh. um, Correct. explain to us just really quickly what that is so that kind of became our term from when our, our friends were going to come over and spend a lot of time on the couch and just talk about life uh usually with tears um and mostly laughter and you know share some wisdom that we've learned over the years Oh, well, I have certainly benefited from your wisdom, and I uh, am a graduate or an alum of Couch Chronicles. <laughs> right. so, uh, I, think I, I, I think I was a student before it actually became Couch Chronicles, uh, but, but nonetheless, I, I'll start with you, Rick. I mean, you know what it means to be a journalist. You know what it means to be in the field, to turn a story. It's not a glamorous business, um, you know, and then you turned your career into a creative project and you became an entrepreneur you're DJing you have your own media company um, and when you see other black entrepreneurs out there you know what are you telling them to keep them encouraged because sometimes that journey is a little different for them than others it's tough and um, that's a great question I think one of the conversations that I have often is just staying with it. You know, I think it's very easy to get discouraged, especially when you're trying to chart your own course and you're not exactly sure the direction you want to go. But the key for me has always been just keep pushing. You know, you, you, if there's something that you're really passionate about if, and you continue to do it, you'll figure out a way to make it successful down the road. So what I've done is basically taken the past 10 years and learned how to monetize all of my hobbies. That's all that my entrepreneurship has it has been you know i enjoyed photography and video started making money doing those those things i like making t-shirts made some money doing t-shirts i like djing and made some money djing so all of the things that i enjoy doing i just figured out a way to do them well enough that people will pay me to do them i mean and you're both entrepreneurs and you are such an innovative spirit you uh, not only you know graduated from duke university you are a physician uh, so you are on the front lines of COVID 19 you are an essential worker so thank you for your service and, and what you do for us every day and it's been a challenge you know we have certainly had to adjust you know we are a family going through the pandemic too even though i'm out you know trying to take care of people the best way that i can so we have had to figure out what works for us? How do I prevent bringing germs into the household after seeing patients? How do I, as an owner of the clinic, how do we make it more safe, you know, at the clinic, but still be able to serve our, our patients? We, when I come back uh, from the office, what I used to do is I used to spray down my shoes before walking in the house and take off my shoes. Now I take them off and I have a different way to kind of wipe them down inside the house. But I used to come in, take my shoes off, spray them before I enter the house. And then as soon as I get into the home, I strip naked. That's awesome. It's the best it thing ever. They, they, they still to this day think it's funny. And I love how you all have 
found the humor, right? Like you, you found sort of the moments of levity uh, in what is a very serious time, right? Mm -hmm. Each guest is asked to uh, think of a historical moment or person uh, or event that is significant to them and that is significant today. The thing that, that caused me to kind of even become more of an entrepreneur was when I passed out at work. <laughs> I passed out at work um, probably about you know, six months into being a mother for the first time, four months maybe, um, w became the co-owner of a practice, a uh, medical practice by accident, uh, was married, first kid, come out on maternity leave, trying to do all the things, be all, be all the people. And my body was like, nah, that's not going to work. So hit the floor. Um, and from that point, fast forward, my father sent me a news article from a magazine, from Newsweek, which then led to me finding the book, The Superwoman Syndrome, which was written by Marjorie Hansen in 1984. So in the 1980s, uh, this, this psychologist was already thinking about the struggles that women were having with trying to balance both being a boss at home and being a boss at work um, and all the medical and mental health problems that came out of that. Um, so I read it from cover to cover. My journey, that's where the superwoman complex came from. And then I started writing and really figuring out what made me most happy in life and work. And then just started shifting a lot of different things, um, both at home and at work. So I feel like that kind of, I mean, that, that took off, you know, so now I'm, I'm speaking about it. I'm, I write about it. That's how I uh, came up with the publishing company. Uh, because once I started writing my books on Superwoman Complex and folks like Tamara and, you know, all my friends and colleagues started reaching out to me like, oh, my God, you did this. Show me how to do it. And that, that's how that company started. And now I, you know, with him, we get to figure out what makes the most sense for us. And then, you know, thank God we've been able to make some money. So <laughs> that's how we live. You know, we're like, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? All right, let's figure it out. Let's do it. Rick Swiner, you got a ministry. You actually have a few ministries. He does. <laughs> is that right? He doesn't like to admit it. You know, tell, tell me about your historical moment. One of them is one that you will be able to relate to. So my first historical moment was when uh, WLFL, where we used to work, decided they were going to close down the newsroom. I'd been in news at that point for nine years on air, 12 years total. I started off at NBC in Washington as a producer and desk, desk editor and that kind of thing. So in 06, I said, well, you know what? They're shutting us down and I'm going to transition from news into a whole different thing. And I moved into sales. So I stayed at the station work, and worked in sales for four years. And the big thing about staying at the station and working in sales is Nicole sent me an email at the station after I left news. She had seen me on the news. But we met prior to that. Yeah, we had met. I didn't want anybody to think that I like I saw him on TV and just stalked him. I mean, that's fine to think that. <laughs> well, we did. That we was okay. We <laughs> and had I left the station to go elsewhere, I would have never gotten the email. But the, the, the key to that as being a historical moment for me was being forced to make a decision about whether or not I'm going to stay in journalism. And I chose not to stay in journalism and to move into a whole different field. So I had a very successful career in sales, but that then piggybacks to the second historical moment, which was December 2009. Uh, we were in Charleston visiting her family for Christmas. We had just gotten married in May, seven months into our marriage. And we we're in Charleston, and I've been having these episodes. My dad had just passed in November, been having these episodes where I wasn't feeling great. Intake nurse takes my blood pressure. It's 250 over 160. I'm on the verge of having a stroke. The, the day after Christmas, 2009, because I'm making all this great money in sales, killing it, but the job was also killing me. Got back to work that Monday, put my two weeks notice in and walked away from a six figure job yeah. in, with, without question. Because as a newlywed, didn't even have kids yet, I knew that the idea of me staying in this job was going to kill me. Um, what are your takeaways from folks? Because you both had you know, a scary wake up calls in a way. I want to shout out my soror, Cheryl Woods Giscombe, who is kind of, she's kind of the guru when it comes to the black superwoman schema. Um, so she's done a lot of research on it. Uh, she's a PhD, she's a doctor. And um, so I want to shout her out because she's also done a lot of good research on this thing. 
But I think it's, you know, that self-care comes first. You have to put yourself first because taking care of everyone else and neglecting yourself literally can kill you. Um, and you can be happy. You can ask for help. You can, you know, you don't have to do all this alone. Um, if finding something and, you know, probably piggybacks on what he's going to say, but if hopefully you can find something that both makes you happy and you can make money out of it. Um, so you don't have to chase chase the almighty dollar until you know you have no more time for yourself i mean just it doesn't make sense so you but you it it usually takes you hitting that rock bottom moment for you to figure that out but i'm what i'm hoping people will do more more often is try to get ahead of that action steps for people i know nicole said take more naps i think i might schedule one today nap queen (laughs) hashtag nap queen yeah she is the. i'm looking at the clock now i'm like am i gonna have time for a nap Let me tell you something. I'm already looking. She has perfected the art of the nap. It's amazing. I'm okay with that. She's like, I'll be back. I'm like, no, you won't. <laughs> Three hours later, it's like, oh, that was good. <laughs> but um, so my takeaways are very simple. Uh, it's a twofold takeaway that matches each moment, right? So the first one is you can't be afraid to pivot, in which we said, and that's why this year has been so important because this year is the manifestation of the pivot back in 2006 and then the next pivot in 2010. You can't live fearful. You have to live smart. And it's okay to have a healthy concern about this thing that we're doing, but you have to also know that there is a way forward. um, And you've got to, part of the work is figuring out what that way is. But you've got to be willing to step outside of the comfort zone to see if you can find something else that will help you grow. You know, like, as you mentioned earlier, I started DJing about two and a half years ago. January 2018 was my first gig. But so the DJ thing became, it's, it's become more of a brand and more of a thing that I've been able to do. And it's evolved into a lot more in the way of opportunity and making money and whatever. But the trick is back in March, once they started shutting everything down, I'd only been DJing at that point for two years. And because I wasn't so locked into an idea about what it means to DJ, I started doing a bunch of virtual sets because, you know, I was like, well, I can plug this thing into here and I can plug this thing into here and I can stream it through here. And then we've got a set online and I've been doing it every week for just about every week for the past six months. Mm -hmm. And it's turned into a very lucrative way. I'm doing virtual parties and clients can reach out and say, Hey man, we, we need somebody. Yeah. We did a wedding. We've, I've done a wedding, a couple of birthday parties, uh, did an event for UNC TV where we did like a live stream over their PBS um, website and all of this stuff. But so using the, again, learning how to pivot, taking the circumstances you have and figuring out, out a way to still be profitable within those circumstances. We have to stop being so fearful and so complacent Um because this time is showing us that fear and complacency can ruin you. You got to be able to go forward. You got to push. I knew you were going to give us plenty of pearls. It's the wine. It's the, the wine. The last thing I will say wine. also is in this world of figuring out what you want to do and entrepreneurship, et cetera, taking care of yourself is finding that partner that supports you doing those things. We see businesses shuttering their doors for good because the pandemic has just been too much. The beauty about the hustle that we have is a lot of us are running businesses right out of our own homes. We don't have a lot of overhead, but we still need the support. Mm -hmm. So if I'm buying some shea butter, like um, one of my classmates, Buttered by Kenya, is sending some shea butter, um, the body butters that she's making. Um, So I order something because I'm using for my beard, right? See what happens. She said, they're going to smell great. You'll love them. I said, all right, cool. I'll order them. But that's the kind of way that we can continue to support other people who look like us. The more you can support the businesses of the people who look like us, the more they can flourish in a time that's very uncertain for them, right? In, in the fall of every year, I would normally be doing a Swiner Publishing Writers Retreat where I teach folks from start to finish how to DIY, DIY your own published book, how to take that book and become an entrepreneur, how to market it on social media and all that good stuff, become a bestseller. But on October the 10th, we're going to be doing it virtually. So October the 10th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 
Uh, we're going to be doing a virtual retreat with three wonderful speakers. You're going to learn how to publish your book. You're going to learn how to market it. You're going to learn how to do your makeup. I have a makeup artist that's going to show you how to do stuff at home during this pandemic. And it's going to be on Hopin, which is um, a good uh, conference uh, vehicle that you can use on online. And so it's going to be great. I think, and <laughs> if nothing else, you're going to see me and I'm going to teach you how to do things on your own. Maybe DJ Big Fella will uh, make an appearance. Is that right? During the writing time, maybe. Well, that's my birthday weekend, so we'll see. Yeah, maybe. Nah, Where there. are you going? I ain't going nowhere. Okay. I'll be there. So <laughs> if by chance you would like to hear some jams, uh, you can always follow me on Instagram, which is uh, DJ Big Fella NC, as in North Carolina. Big fellas, B I G F E L L A N C. But I actually go live on Twitch. So it's twitch.tv slash DJ Big Fella NC. If you follow and subscribe there, you'll get notifications when I'm going live. We typically go live on Fridays and Sundays. Sunday is a late night event called the Sunday Nightcap, which is a little bit of everything. It gets a little weird on Sundays. It's great. Uh, and then Friday is more of a party vibe, normally around four or five in the afternoon. We kind of kick off and not start off your weekend. So we start the weekend on Fridays, wrap up the weekend on Sundays. But it's always a good time. Uh, the chat is funny. Got a lot of friends who will check in and the, the conversations are insane. And I'm just playing music in the background. But it's a lot of fun. So feel free to come check that out. Um, and I hope you'll enjoy the, the music we play. Any other takeaway? And vote. Vote, 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 vote. 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 Wear, wear your mask. Wear your mask. Vote and wear your mask. And vote. <clears throat> yeah. And start your own business. And, and start, start your own business. business. And then vote. To higher levels. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mask, vote, and start your business. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And then yes. take a nap. And take a nap. Yeah.